So I went to a Waldorf school. How many people know what a Waldorf school is? I figured at Pickathon I wouldn't have to do a lot of explanation, but I'm going to do it anyway. So Waldorf school is like a bunch of hippies that got together to try to teach you math using fairy dust. So I went to a Waldorf school in Detroit, and uh, the school was K through 12, and we had about 250 kids in the entire school. And it seemed like at some point the school recognized that they were going to have to throw us out into the real world, and we weren't going to fit. Um, we had weaving homework. We had spinning homework like we didn't look like any other kids in the world and then we were going to have to start going to things like public school so our school decided that the best way to make us look like normal kids whatever that meant was to do sports now i need to walk you through a waldorf gym class this is how gym class goes in a waldorf school you guys should run we don't feel like running well you should find something that you feel like doing and do that so we weren't really physical kind of folk and um the olympics happened right so this is back in the 80s and the olympics happens and our school decides that we're going to have a school Olympics. So these are the things we figured out. People didn't know how to run. People didn't know how to throw a javelin. I don't even know where we got a javelin from. I dropped my shot put on the gym teacher's toe, and so the Olympics was canceled. We all just went back to weaving baskets. So at some point, the school recognized that we weren't retaining enough kids from eighth grade going into high school and a lot of kids said things like well I want to make sure I go to prom or I want to be on a sports team which feels like a lie but apparently they said it and the school decided well we should get together some sort of sports team and the sports team they decided was the eighth grade would have basketball teams eighth grade girls basketball team eighth grade boys basketball team now we didn't really have anybody to play against except other kids in the city and that would be a bad plan because we were going to get our asses handed to us and at like all the time and everybody knew it. So they decided we should play another Waldorf school. Now, finding a Waldorf school with a basketball team is kind of like finding your wedding ring at Pickathon. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure somebody's got it and they're going to turn it in, but you don't know when and you don't know where. Okay, so we go to... Philadelphia to go play another Waldorf school, the Kensington, uh, Pennsylvania Waldorf school to be exact. And two things, well, there are three things that happen. Number one, we get there and the girls team decide that they don't want to play basketball. And in typical Waldorf fashion, everybody goes, oh, okay. So we just didn't play. The second thing that happened where the boys played, we cheered them on and they got creamed. It was embarrassing. But the girls were also very smug because we're like, we told you we should have all just not played. But you can't drive all the way to Philadelphia and then play no one, even though that's sort of Waldorf to do. Then the third thing that happened was the oldest girl in our class, a young woman named Helena, actually ended up getting like the kissing disease you know what I mean like she made out with this dude and we were like you made out with somebody so she got busted for a year for being she was sick barely survived it but all we remember was Helena kiss somebody so we get back and eighth grade comes and goes and out of the 20 kids that are in my class only seven move on to the high school and this is exactly what the school was afraid of so now this is the last bastion of the high school, but we've got to give these kids something to do. Now, before I get too much further into the story, I want to explain something to you. My mother was the first African-American woman to ever coach basketball in the state of Georgia, and she carried a 4.0 grade point average all the way through school. I possessed none of her talents. <laughs> she and, had, and I had nothing to discuss except the fact that I was constantly failing at school. And I figured, okay, if I do something that's like something she does, we'll have something to talk about besides my failing grades. So when the school decided they were going to do a varsity and junior varsity girls basketball team, I decided to try out. Now, I want to tell you my theory. My theory was I could get on the team because it's Waldorf and everybody gets on the team. But I wouldn't have to play because there'd be so much better players than me and I could just ride the pine. I'd get in a little uniform. I'd sit on the bench. My mom would think at least she tried. And then we could have a conversation that wasn't about, you know, math. I try out for the team. God help me. Only seven girls tried out for the team. So varsity and junior varsity are seven girls. That means I'm playing. I'm playing like 300 minutes a game, even though I suck. So I was not good at any of the things you need to be good at to play basketball, and I possessed none of the things you needed. Things for basketball you need. Being tall. I'm not tall. Be athletic. Not athletic. Eye-hand coordination. Zero. Interest in playing the game. Zero. Knowledge of the game. Zero. It's, I, I, this is not how this is supposed to work. I'm not supposed to be on the court. 
So I am practicing with Mr. Honey. That was our gym teacher. Mr. Honey says to me, you need to define your role on this team, which is his way of telling me that the way I'm playing is becoming a hazard to the other, to the, to our team. Like I'm not, I'm becoming a problem for the other people on our team. So as a drama geek, I started thinking about my role and I decided I wanted to play the role of enforcer. So I took my limited skill set, which is being large and being angry, and I turned that into a reason to play basketball. Now, at this time, the Detroit Pistons were known as the bad boys. And what happened with the Detroit Pistons is if you tried to get into the paint, and the paint is the part that's the painted part under the basket, they would break your face. And then you would try to, you'd have to take an outside shot. And people back then were bad at outside shots. And the guy's name was Bill Lambeer, and you'd come under, and he'd pop you in the face. And then you'd go back out and say, okay, I shouldn't go in there. So that was what I decided to do. So we're playing basketball and I'm popping people in the face and it seems to be working. Like we're losing, but we are gaining respect. <laughs> now my school, Waldorf was uh, designed by a guy named Albert Kahn. Albert Kahn is an amazing architect and most people outside the city of Detroit have never heard his name, but he designed our, our school before basketball was like a thing. So my school looks like Hogwarts when you drive by. And our gym looks like what a Hogwarts gym would look like. Like it's sort of good for Quidditch, but not anything else. And the perimeter of the basketball court, the difference between it and the outline of the actual building footprint is about a foot. So if you're driving at the basket and you don't cut hard, you will hit the wall. It's inevitable. You're going to hit the wall, do yourself a lot of damage. So when people played on our court, we had an advantage. At least we knew how to cut. So if we're coming down the court, we could cut. Now, here's something else that's going on. None of us can shoot. We got one girl on the team that can shoot, and her name is Angela. So we had two actual calls. We had two plays we could call. Gold. Gold was pass the ball to Angela. <laughs> then we had a maroon play. The maroon play was bounce pass the ball to Angela. So it didn't take long for everybody to figure out that Angela was the real threat. So they start double teaming her. Now, I'm always open because one, I can't shoot, and two, nobody wants to come within swinging feet of me because I'm hitting, you know, I've, I've spent most of my games chatting with referees. So I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm bouncing, I'm bouncing, I'm dribbling, and I'm looking to get open to pass this ball to Angela, and she's not open. She can't get open, there's too many people. And I keep dribbling, and I'm passing it to other people, and I, I passed it to this one girl named Lizzie. She caught it, went, ah, and passed it back. <laughs> she was terrified of even touching the ball. I'd forgotten about that in the moment, in the heat of the game. So I'm still dribbling, still dribbling, still doing the, the three seconds in and out the paint, three seconds in and out the paint, and all of a sudden I said, well, screw it. I can't do anything else with this ball. I might as well shoot it. So I drive down the paint, I go up, the ball hits the backboard and goes through the basket. I have made a layup. Okay, this reaction is almost the same reaction that happened in the gym. My school, every, the game stops, first of all. And one of the reasons the game stops is because we're playing a Catholic school called Our Lady Star of the Sea, and we called them Tuna High, and they were angry about that. And then we were punching on them too. So when I made an actual basket, they got like double angry. Then my school people didn't think for one second that I'd ever make a layup, so my school stopped talking. Our team was in shock, and Mr. Honey sat down. Like he saw, he saw it happen, and he just, like his legs went off from under him. He just fell down in a chair. Now, it was and remains to this day my greatest sports moment, of which I've had that one. Um, I went home and told my mother that I made a layup. And my mother said, well, stop. You need to tell me what you think a layup is. And I told her, this is what I think it is. She said, oh my God, you made a layup. And so then we started talking about basketball. We started talking about pick and rolls. And we started talking about like the Pistons defense. And we had a really good conversation about something that wasn't about me failing school. Now, she was less than enthused when she came to the sports banquet uh, at the end of the year. And they announced my stats as I walked across the stage. Total years points, six. Total fouls, 23. Total technical fouls, 68. And I stand by that record.